so it's now Friday the 28th of June and it's half past eight in the evening. Yeah, we're currently sitting on anchor at Selsey waiting for the weather to improve so that we can move on again. So it's been a bit of a combination of a journey since we last spoke to you. We were hopefully settling down for a nice decent prolonged period of rest at St Margaret's Hope. St Margaret's Bay. So, sorry, St Margaret's <laughs> Bay at um, just on the other side of the Dover and um, I'll let Alan tell the story. Yeah, so we we dropped anchor in a beautiful little bay and basically paid a time for the night and uh, we were hoping to get a decent bit of rest because the next day we were wanting to get cracking make the best out of the tide to get past the busy port of Dover. Uh, however, an hour after bedding down our anchor alarm went off to say that we were dragging anchor and uh, it was quite evident that we were and straight away we were, we were doing one and a half knots so the tide had quite right, a grip Back the way we came from. Yeah. So we got to very very quickly, got the anchor recovered and Mary was on the oars initially and uh, we were struggling to make any any headway. We were still going backwards so I jumped on the oars as well and safe to say that we were we were going at sprint speed. Uh, really just giving it 110% of and we effort. And hard on those oars. And uh, you know we overcame the tide but, but only just so we were we were just giving it our all, probably for about half an hour's worth of rowing, was it? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, and I think in that covered maybe a hundred metres in that distance in um, that time. Yeah, so we we got back into the bay, and we edged a wee bit closer into the shore this time, just to get out of the worst of the flow, and uh, dropped anchor again. And and thankfully, um, it bit, and we didn't have any more any more drama that night. Uh, so we just it just meant that we didn't get as much rest as well. Um, but we did get up in the morning, and it was a beautiful start to the day. Scorchio. And Roasted. yeah, from first thing in the morning, it was shorts and t-shirt. Uh, we went flying past over, tied with us, and didn't have any any uh, real risks or hassles or hazards with big ships. We just motored on through quite quickly. We weren't in the way of anybody, and they weren't in the way of us. So it was it was uh, just exactly how you want it, really. We had a great row, it was really hot, so we, we were, what we were doing that day was like well, hour on, hour off, was it? Cause yeah, it was just, so hot. just to get out of the sun for a bit. Cause yeah, it was, uh, when you're exerting quite a bit of energy it's hard, you're, you know, your body's generating heat and it was high 20s and there's no shelter from the sun on Bodicea. So we were just taking it in turns to get into the cabin to get a wee bit of relative shade and cool down a wee bit and uh, yeah we pushed on made really good progress, got as far as Dungeness and uh, the, aye, the the background, the geography kind of changes as you go along the coast there so you've got the iconic white cliffs of Dover uh, which are just they're beautiful to look at and as you get further along the coast it changes quite dramatically and, and uh, Dungeness is uh, it's, it's a desert basically and that's not me slagging it off, it's known as being Desert like. Totally it's flat. It, it looks like yeah. looking out over prairie it's, fields. It's bonny in its own is its own right, you know, it's uh, just a different landscape altogether. And on Dungeness it's a sort of point that sticks out. Uh, it's uh, home to a decommissioning nuclear power station as well as lots of houses and there's also a lifeboat station there. Um and uh, it's a carriage launched. Shannon class lifeboat that's there with uh, I think they've got a D class as well uh, and uh, so we anchored more or less just straight off the shore from the lifeboat station Oh when we were there we missed a visitor as well Oh yeah we were, we were sound asleep <laughs> when some, somebody came out on a on a kayak to say hello uh, we were both in the cabin hatch pulled over and, and sound asleep <laughs> so uh, gutted we never got to say hello Yeah apologies uh, especially for somebody making the time and effort to come out on a kayak, that's quite a special thing. It wasn't exactly the smoothest of conditions for the wheeler. No, it wasn't. It, it was a bit of a bit of a choppy day, to say the least. So, uh, where do we go from there? So, Dungeness, we hold anchor and 
came round the, the point tied with us it was just starting to make at that point it was a beautiful evening and it was night. yeah um, uh, we just continued on and our plan was to just keep going hopefully just roll one on one off through the night and just keep going as long as we could and um, there did come a point where where were we now it was Hastings Hastings yeah the tide was getting pretty strong and we were down to about a knot um, and I, I came on the oars for my student Mary said do you, do you want to just drop the anchor and I thought well let's just we need to make progress because we know there's weather coming so I'll just stay on the oars and hopefully that just even if we only get a mile that's still a bit of progress so that's exactly what we did and we just slogged it out can't say it was easy or all that enjoyable but we we slogged it out and got there uh, the one good thing with that horrible time of day it was it was getting close to midnight I think and it was pitch dark when I came out on deck nothing no no natural light the moon couldn't be seen um, but while I was on the oars I saw this red thing in the sky off in a sort of southerly direction and I initially thought oh, what's that is it a flare or an aircraft or something else and as as the minutes went past it got bigger and bigger I realised it was actually the moon and it was beautiful red colour and it gradually changed from red to orange to the standard white moon that you get um, and it's just pretty cool really quite quite unusual don't think I've ever seen the moon uh, present itself like that and from there we just kept on rowing um, we very slowly initially got us uh, towards Beachy Head so passing Eastbourne around Beachy Head and it's it's iconic it's it's a cracking spot it's uh, again it's white cliffs uh, but at, at Beachy Head there's a there's a lighthouse at the at the base of the cliff which is quite unusual we just made it past Beachy Head when the tide started turning and uh, it was it was a bit of a chore to roll so we we made for the shore and there's there's a beautiful little spot there called Cookmere Haven and uh, it's a nature reserve and it it's you know you can get quite close into the shore so we had a bit of protection from the, the tide uh, but it allowed us to overlook the, the seven sisters which is the seven sort of humps in the in the cliff uh, and it was just it was a beautiful spot the sun was baking down to say the least yeah. um, and we just waited until the tide turned so we got a wee bit of rest uh, it was quite hot so it was difficult to sleep yeah, it just made an action plan for going forwards as well yeah and, and our action plan basically was we need to hit this hard because we know there's southwesterly wind coming and this part of the coastline's not actually got a lot of anchorage options for southerly wind so there's plenty of harbours that you could go into but because we're doing this unsupported um, that gives us a challenge now the harbours that are along the coast don't really have space for anchoring in so we just needed to push on to find shelter and the only place that we could see that was really feasible within distance uh, was Selsey, so hiding behind Selsey Bill and that in itself was a challenge in, its, in itself because of the distance involved it's uh, what did we have left to do something like 35, 35 miles, miles from from uh, Cookmere Haven and um, yeah that's quite a lot on uh, yeah in the, the space of time that we had so we decided to just go for it <laughs> yeah basically so when we set off we were rowing two up initially just to fight the last wee bit of tide and then we dropped to one on one off just because it was so hot and we then got to a point did we stay rowing one on one off up until we dropped the anchor no we we were pretty much rowing two up to try and make yeah. the best speed so we're yeah of course we were right so we're just having little breaks that's right yeah so we're pretty much rowing 
two up with 20 minutes off the oars every now and again. Yeah, and we got to a point uh, off due, due south of Worthing um, and the tide just became a little bit too much so we were down less than a knot. So we decided just to drop the anchor for about three hours um, and it was the strongest part of the tide. So once that had abated we'd, we'd just got back on the oars and it it, it was a, a real hard push for the remaining, whatever it was, 15, 16 miles. Because um, we knew well, this we're wind making, was coming. We were making really good progress with it as well and then mm -hmm. that blasted wind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, we should have been here in plenty of time for the wind coming in, but unfortunately the wind came in stronger earlier, and earlier and than it was forecast. Like a good few hours earlier than it was forecast, and gave us a bit of a battle to get in. But yeah, we did make it despite we, we got here. Um, sore bellies and vomiting, and yeah, <laughs> um, well, but Mary being an absolute trooper, just got on with it and. We, we got here, we were both quite exhausted to say the least, so we dropped anchor, um, spoke to, to Rob at the lifeboat station here and at the blather talked about where it would be safe to anchor, um, so he, he sort of suggested where, where it would be good to go and we dropped the anchor and that's where we still are right now. Um, but it was a battle to get here and when we got here we quickly had a little bit of food and bedded down and I think we've slept for something like 20 hours. Uh, just shows how tired we actually were. Yeah. And I think that's not just from that little journey but just a combination of... Yeah, body's starting to get sore and Aye, yeah. stiff in places as well. Although I think a couple of days rest has certainly done me the world a good one. Well, Aye, same here. I'm not quite as stiff and sore as I was and I feel, feel ready to go again. Um, which will hopefully be in the early hours of the, the morning coming. Yeah. So we did get treated to the launch of a Shannon lifeboat though. We which did. Was quite interesting. So we heard beach launch. A, heard a Mayday relay broadcast by the Coast Guard and uh, yeah, the next thing was Selsey was getting launched and uh, it was a, a a yacht ashore or or about to go ashore near somewhere near Little Haven. Little Haven or Little Hampton? Little Hampton. Little Hampton, sorry. And um, uh, the, the broadcast was that the people were preparing to abandon. So that's that's quite a bleak outlook. So um, the next thing we know, the, the doors are opening in the lifeboat station and Shannon's trundling down the beach. And really impressive sight. The boat getting launched and, and firing on out past us. So um, there is a video of that on our... Facebook page if anyone's wanting to look. Thoroughly worth a, a look and uh, we, we caught another clip of the guys coming back in and, and landing on the beach. That was even more impressive than their lodge. <laughs> it is. Uh, so before they came back onto the beach though they did swing in past and um, we got to say hello and, which is really nice uh, and uh, off they went and tidied up and yeah just it's, it's one of the reasons one of the two reasons why we're doing what we are doing is raise money for the RNLI. and the other reason is obviously the Scottish Charity Air Ambulance but to see the 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 crew and boat in action today it, you know and, and we're both coming from a lifeboating background but it's quite a special thing to see and yeah just hope that the outcome was good for everybody involved with the job today. It was, they said the guys were safe for the shore when they visit, swung by. Aye. So, good all round on this occasion. So, I think we'll be hopefully setting off in the morning. We'll just have a final check of the weather. If it's not tomorrow morning, it'll be Sunday. And we'll get rounding into the Solent for the next little bit of bad weather that's coming. So, there's a lot of sitting and waiting at the moment. But we're hitting it hard when we can. And just plodding on and getting there. Later's through.